Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Can you still hear him? Nope, just you! Good! Now hang on! I think in every community I've ever been, the other is vilified and someone to be afraid of. Everyone is horrified and disgusted by you because you are monsters! If we share who we are just to share who we are, not with an agenda to convert anyone to our way of thinking, not with an agenda to change anybody else, but just to share who we are. We're all healthier for it, and we're not living in fear. There is joy and growth on the other side of fear and insecurity, and that's when we should say Silenzio Bruno and just plow ahead. Silenzio Bruno, you taught me that. By reverse gatekeeping me, you're just walling yourself off. Oh, damn, son, get this man a mic so he can drop it. There's a mic on his phone, it, it counts. Welcome to Cinema Therapy. I am Alan Seawright, professional filmmaker who needs therapy. And I'm Jonathan Decker, a licensed therapist who loves movies. What are we doing today? Well, uh, I thought I'd have you react, as you often do, to a film. And this film is about two fish friends. <laughs> Luca! Luca you is the are, film. You are crushing it today. This is great. Two John, fish friends. Jonathan. <laughs> otherwise, uh, Luca, uh, colon, two fish friends go for an adventure. <laughs> Exclamation point. Okay, I'm excited to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely using that. We're using that. The energy is off the charts. <laughs> Let's do this. They're two minutes late. Was there a boat? Uh, huh? Did you hide? Yes, Mom. Because if they catch even a glimpse of you, you think they come around to meet new friends, huh? No. Make small talk. I, I, I don't. No, they're here to do murders. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they're here to do murders. I mean, kid, did you see her eyes when she said that? Yeah, they like narrowed into slits. did not have motors. Luca. Huh? What's on your mind? I, I, I will, I, I was just wondering, where do boats come from? <coughs> the land monster town, just above the surface. It'd be the guy at cards there once. <gasps> Mom, what are you doing? He's old enough to hear about it. You've been to the surface and, and done the change? No, no, the end. Shut it down. I was just curious. Shut it down. Yeah, well, the curious fish gets caught. We do not talk, think, discuss, contemplate, or go anywhere near the surface. Got it? Yes, Mom. Here, now let's get back to work. <laughs> oh man. Hey. Oh, the fish have the dumbest little Look faces. The fish are so stupid. It's you know, I love you, right? I know, Mom. The, we're going to see later that the people on land talk about them as the sea monsters. Sure. Right? Yeah. Which we're all familiar with sea monsters, yeah. oceanic monsters, but they talk about the people as land monsters. And right out of the gate, the, the, I see a big theme throughout Luca is fear of the other fear of people who are different and then telling stories to like instill fear of the other into, yeah, sure. and that gets passed from generation to generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And I love about Pixar films and movies in general, where we take these fantastical elements, we can explore something from real life, but strip it of race or sexuality or religion and just focus on the principle that we're talking about. And then right. it can be for everybody. Right. So Luca meets a boy who is... Also a fish face. Also a fish face. We're just going to call him fish faces for the rest of the episode. And Luca's freaking out about it because he's not allowed up there, but he's super curious, and this Alberto kid is great. And he's made a friend, and he's got a whole new world ahead of him, and it's just, yeah. It's just amazing. You want to help? Me? Yeah. Wait. No, I can't. I gotta go home. Right this second? Yeah. If my parents found out I was up here, oof, <laughs> it would be bad. So thank you, but... Goodbye. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. <laughs> okay, but now I, I really do have to go. Okay, bye. I just keep hearing the... Seriously, uh, I have to go like now, like right now. Okay, SpongeBob thing. <sighs> Two this... hours later. <sighs> it's even better than the picture. Yeah, it is. This is so relatable oh, to my childhood. Oh, yeah. See you tomorrow. <laughs> He smiles because he's like, I know, I'll be back. I'll be back even though I shouldn't be. There's such a rush here of discovery. Of yeah. When you find something that was always forbidden to you and then you just want to explore it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the things that are forbidden to us are forbidden for a reason. Sure. Uh, and other times it comes down to ignorance or fear. 
And Luca is experiencing a little bit of both. I mean, he does have a reason to be afraid of the people in the village, mm-hmm. uh, but not because they're inherently bad, just because they don't understand. Right. Right. And as Falcone says in Batman Begins. And you always fear what you don't understand. One thing I, I did want to mention about the filmmaking here, the design and the animation style in particular makes this film almost look like a stop motion film. I thought that. It looked like Ardman. Like the faces. It looks look- like Ardman. Like, Pixar literally invented motion blur in a computer graphic. Did you know this? I did not. So, like, when you're moving really quickly, the individual pictures will have blur in them. You can see it stretched out. Yeah, you can see it stretched out. You can change camera settings, and you'll get rid of it, and it won't be motion blur, but it'll look really weird and choppy. Or if you're spinning something, you'll see a circle. You won't... Yeah, that's, that's exactly how it works. And so Pixar literally invented motion blur in a computer. But some of the stuff like where uh, Alberto is like running down the hill, Mm -hmm. instead of having his legs blur, they do an old school animation technique where they do partial frames. So his leg will be pointed this way, but there's also a foot here and a foot up here. Oh. Which is like old school 30s animation, like Looney Tunes technique to make it look like you're moving really fast. You just have stuttery images. Computer generated, but stop motion style. That is really fascinating. It's it's really, really interesting. One of the things that they're doing, and this is definitely purposeful, is the depth of field on the cameras. Mm -hmm. When you're shooting a model, my face will be in focus and right behind me will be out of focus. And they, I think, replicated that on purpose. It makes for a really interesting, fascinating look. Like we're getting a sort of diorama Italy. Yeah. And it's super fun. I, if there are any Pixar people watching this video, please sound off in the comments. Please, we would love to talk to you on the show, but please sound off in the comments and let us know if that was a thing that you actually did, because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just that little... <laughs> there's a great bit of performance, yes, and the animation is great, but... <laughs> Wait, that was good? <laughs> did you see the height I got? Hey, nice ramping. Come on, let's build another one. <laughs> we gotta ride together. If you don't sit on the back and hold on to the front, the whole thing falls apart. Oh, and who's holding the ramp? The turtle. <laughs> God, he's faster than he looks. Look how gorgeous the leaves okay. are and all yeah. the grass. Is... I'm telling you, man, the rendering is, is just unreal. Never in a million years. Hey, hey, hey. I know your problem. You got a Bruno in your head. A Bruno? Yeah. I get one too sometimes. Alberto, you can't. Alberto, you're gonna die. Alberto, don't put that in your mouth. Luca, it's simple. Don't listen to stupid Bruno. Why is his name Bruno? I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Call him whatever you want. <laughs> Shut him up. Bru- Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Louder. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Can you still hear him? Nope. Just you. Good. Now hang on. <laughs> and yeah, this does make me want to go to Italy again. Yeah! Uh, last time you were there, did you jump homemade Vespas no, off the No, Italy's just pretty. That's true. The turtle! <laughs> <laughs> These birds just feel like Ardman birds, too. Uh huh. Uh-oh. That's good thinking. Yeah! Yes! You come so close to dying as a kid and you're just like that, Bruno. Yes. Only as Yay. an adult you look back and you're like, oh wow. That was so we were so close to death. <laughs> so Silencio Bruno, how is that as a like therapeutic hmm. technique for the things that, that keep us from doing that keep us from becoming what we should be? Here's what I think. One you have to gauge is Bruno giving you advice that's actually going to help you or is he holding you back because you're afraid Mm. and sometimes it's hard to gauge because well you can always find a reason to not do something right you can always say well i can't do that because i could get hurt or i can't do that because i might get my heart broken or i can't do that because i might fail they might laugh at me this or that reason and then there's i can't do that because i i could die or get paralyzed (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah because if bruno's giving you pause that's a good thing sure if Bruno's stopping you dead in your tracks, if it's I, I until it can, can be perfect, I can't do it. Like that's a Bruno you should silence. Right. But if he's like, hey, uh, a sheet is not a parachute, 
<laughs> That's not a Silencio Bruno yeah. moment. I silenced Bruno way too much as a kid, <laughs> and I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> but there, but there is joy and growth on the other side of fear and insecurity, and that's when we should say Silencio Bruno and just plow ahead. Okay, then. And we're all on a big round rock, floating around a star in the solar system? So they've gone into town and met and Julia. The solar system? Only a galaxy full of solar systems. Then what? And she's expanding Luca's mind. Of galaxies. Uh, and then what? And then? I don't know. But next year, in advanced astronomy, I'm going to use my school's telescope. So maybe I'll find out. That thing's huge. I wish I could show it to you. She reminds me of a Charlie Brown character. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Too much? <laughs> Never. <laughs> hey, Luca. I've been looking everywhere for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Could I maybe borrow this just for tonight? You can have it. <laughs> the universe is literally yours! Wow, thank you! Luca! Uh, okay. <laughs> Those aren't fish. What? Yeah, Julia explained it to me. They're fires, but like one million times bigger. Uh, no they're not. Soon you'll be ours, sweet Vespa. Take a look. I thought of every single thing we're so gonna do. So Alberto need. just wants to get this motorcycle with Luca and just so escape. Because cool. Alberto's lonely, his dad abandoned him. And, yeah. and Luca's his lifeline. Yeah. He's the only friend he's ever had. And now Luca's making life. new friends and has new interests. And Alberto's jealous. And Julia says there's an even bigger one at our school. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that because I definitely was Alberto a lot when that? I was a kid. Mm. Sounds interesting. Still am to some extent. The reason we're getting sometimes. a Vespa is to live on our own. We, we don't need school. We don't need anybody. Couldn't we just try it? Just for a few days? Luca, sea monsters can't go to school. What do you think is going to happen when they see your fish face? <sighs> so, uh, I mean, obviously Alberto is, you know, this is just a typical sort of jealousy and that kind of thing. And he's posturing, my dad's going to come back. I don't need you. I don't need anything. But really, he's clinging to Luca. Oh yeah, like a like a life preserver, and that's like, is that where most does most jealousy come from? You know, he was obviously abandoned, but is that you know like abandonment or like abandonment issues? Is that the root cause of that a lot of the time? I, mean, I think jealousy is a human emotion, but uh, extreme jealousy can often come from that, or from feeling from abandonment or from rejection, feeling alone, feeling isolated. We get all jealous and territorial when we put all of our eggs in one basket. Right, or in one relationship or with oh, one person. Okay. Got it. Uh, that my needs, my emotional needs, my relational needs are all just centered around this one being. Because then, and, and this happens in abusive relationships, you can't have friends unless right. I sign off on them. And those friends can't be a threat to me or the time that we spend together. Sure. And so the solution very often is working on yourself. Hmm. Am I okay to be on my own? Or am I secure enough in this relationship you know, if you love someone, set them free type thing. Staying means nothing unless you're free to leave. Right. That's true in romantic relationships. It's true in friendships. It's true in families. We cling so tightly to people because we don't want to lose them. And then it's kind of like in Star Wars. The more you tighten your grip, Tarkin, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. The, the tighter you grasp people, the more they... Oh, you're clingy. And I love the, the arc. Of one of the several arcs of this film and the lessons of this film is that when we actually love people, we love them more than we love our own wants. Mm -hmm. Alberto right now doesn't truly love Luca. He's attached to Luca. Right. Later, he loves him because he wants whatever's going to make Luca happy. And that is what assures that Luca will keep coming back to him. Yeah. You know? Uh, but yeah, our jealousy tends to come from insecurity. And people who are confident don't have to project it like Alberto does. People who are confident are just at peace with everyone kind of doing their thing. Why don't you do it your way and I'll do it my way? How about that? Well, I do want to talk about what I call reverse gatekeeping. Interesting. Tell me more. Well, with gatekeeping, with any community, people say, well, you're not, you're not one of us for this or that reason. You're not a true Star Wars fan unless you've read all the novels. Trust me, you don't need to read all the novels to be a Star Wars fan. You're not a true Star Wars fan unless you like the prequels. You're not a true Star Wars fan unless you hate the prequels. You're not a, you know, all this stuff. Sure, sure, Same thing with religion, same thing. Especially people gatekeep all over the place. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not especially qualified to speak to the specifics of race or culture or sexuality other than my own, but I do know that it happens 
in every group. Oh yeah. Right. I, I have friends for people of color and they have others who say, you're not black enough. Right. Right. right? Which, that type what, of thing. What the hell? Or, or, or you're what not gay hell? or you're not gay enough or you're, you know, these types of things. Yeah. Now I've been told for various reasons that I'm not a Christian and I'm like, well, you know, whatever. I'm down with Jesus. Uh, so <laughs> the important thing is Jesus is down with Jono. So what I call reverse gatekeeping goes the other way. Okay. You're one of us, so you're not allowed to associate outside of us. You're oh, one of us, so you're not. Oh, 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 look, oh. you're part of our church. So what are you doing with people who are part of that church? What are you doing with those heathens? Yeah. Yeah. Or what do you? What? Why are you hanging out with the gay kids? Or why? Why do you have black friends? You know, like all sorts of stuff. Or yeah. you hang out with trekkers? Like, what's your deal? You're a Star Wars person. You're a Star Wars fan. <laughs> you have a droid. So reverse gatekeeping, and I may just have coined that right now, or maybe somebody else has a long time, but I see that as like, you can't leave. Jono definitely invented this right now. <laughs> you just witnessed the birth of a new idea. Woo! Or at least a new phrase for an idea that's been around forever. But if you associate with those outside of this, then you're no longer one of us. Right. Right? You've left the gate and you can't come back in. Yeah. And Alberto is doing this with Luca, where he's like... You're associating with a land monster. You're becoming friends with Julia. Mm. She's introduced. We don't need her. And Alberto's getting dangerously close to it's her or me. Yeah. Which comes from a place of insecurity. For sure. Other, right? Sure. People feel the need to deny a part of themselves to fit in. And that to me, when we talk about Luca being like an LGBT plus a uh, metaphor allegory. You could definitely read it that way. Oh, it's, it, yeah. it applies. I mean, straight up applies. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Julia, your school, does it take all kinds of people? I mean, what if some of them were not human? Alberto. To your what point. If some were, oh, I don't know, sea monsters? Sea monsters? I doubt your school would even accept sea monsters, right? Oh, <laughs> Oh, that's a weird joke, Alberto. Yeah, I know. It's kind of hard to imagine. So let me just show you. No! <gasps> Come on. Julia, wait. We don't have time to goof around. Huh? Ah! 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 Don't hurt us! See? I knew this would happen. Sea would've... monster! Did you hear that? This way! Luca? And he doesn't even care if he gets speared at that point, he's just lost. I am the Arty! You let it get away! To the boat! Don't get a single! Oh man. So, whoever the voice actor is that plays Hercule is fantastic, but the way he's written is just brilliant. He's such a, like, nothing is ever his fault. Idiot, you let them get away! It's like, oh. I know that guy. We all know that guy. That guy's the worst. Before we go back on theme, what are you eating today? I got the old classic Sour Power because it's very Pixar colored <laughs> and uh, it's delicious. I had a bite of that and it gave me a panic attack, but I had a caramel <laughs> apple, which to me really works for this film because it's two different worlds blending together in perfect harmony. In perfect harmony. That is really good, by the way. It, yeah. tastes, it tastes like a candy apple. Lisa'spopcorn.com forward slash cinema therapy. You can get a subscription box, six different flavors a month, which yeah. is pretty cool. One thing uh, as far as filmmaking, I keep noticing this trend in Pixar films where the scenery and the locales are photo real and then the people or the, the characters, characters are not. Like Good yeah. Dinosaur was a lot like that. Yeah, very much so. Good Dinosaur very much looked like a cartoon with the dinosaur, but then everything else was just... It just looked like real life. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah. Well, and this, some things are stylized and some things are not, right? Like, a lot of the landscapes are very stylized, mm -hmm. but that beach, you know, the pebbles on the beach and the water... The water just looks like real water. That's I've been to that beach in Italy, yeah. That's stuff. Like, if you didn't know, you wouldn't be able to tell. You'd just be like, yeah, they just filmed some water and then stuck some characters in it. Yeah. Like, it's freaking amazing. So here, Luca, he has to deny his fishness. Yes, he does. And it's honestly because Alberto forced his hand. Right. And Alberto forced his hand because he's saying, embrace who you are, show who you are, stand proud before the world. But whatever it is that you're hiding you get to decide when the time is that you reveal it. And Albert's trying to make Luca, and that's backfires. Well, and I mean, you know, Albert took away Luca's ability to choose. Uh, watch our Love, Simon episode, where someone else takes away someone's choice to come out, 
and it's uh, gut wrenching. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. What I do love is um, you were talking about how Alberto assumes how people are going to react, mm. but Luca and Alberto have been spending time with uh, Julia and her father Massimo. Mm-hmm. Who they're terrified of at first, understandably. And then they spend time with them, and they help him fish, and he really gets to see them for who they truly are, mm-hmm. i.e., their character, before he learns that they're fish faces. Well, yeah, and he and Massimo sees through Alberto's bluster and everything basically immediately. Yeah, which is weird because I don't know how he can see. He's just a pair of eyebrows. Which is, <laughs> I love the character design in this movie. It's so much fun. <laughs> I also love when Julia finds out that Luca is a fish face, and her response to him is not fear, it's just to warn him and to look out for him. But so now they're doing the, what are they doing, the, the Vespa race, the bike race? They're, they're doing the Puerto Rosso Cup, where they have to swim and eat and ride a bike. It's in, apparently in an Italian, like, eat a <laughs> this ton is an of Italian pasta. triathlon. I want to do this, and then <laughs> puke pasta everywhere. <laughs> this actually sounds like fun to me. <laughs> Also, all of her, did you notice that all of her little exclamations are cheeses? Are they? That's Every fantastic. single one is a cheese. It's Saint some kind of cheese. Ah, what? Whoa, you really are crazy. Learned it from you. Let's get to the water. You should have left when I told you. Now, I, I love this shot. <laughs> So long, evil empire of injustice. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. They cover his little eyes. No! Ah. Julia! <laughs> Mostly Marini, give me that. Oh. Julia, are you all right? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, okay. Uh, thanks, guys. <gasps> Julieta. Papa, I... We finally see his eyes. Look at that. You're not going anywhere. Come on. I saw them first. The reward is mine. We're not afraid of you. No, but we're afraid of you. Everyone is horrified and disgusted by you because you are monsters. Stop. They're not monsters. Oh, yeah? Who are they then? I know who they are. They are Luca and Alberto, and they are the winners. <laughs> nice symbolism as he drops his spear. What? We can't be the winners. They are not even people. Signora Marsigliese. Technically, legally, yes, they won. <gasps> we won? Who cares if they won? They're sea monsters. No, sir. Cosa bent? <laughs> that is a great moment of using your privilege and power right there. Yep. Tito, Guido, another harpoon! Ah, idiotic, be useful for once in your pathetic lives! Guido, Chicho. <laughs> Oops. His expensive sweater. No, piccolino. <laughs> Reign of terror. It's finally over. Luca. Luca. Oh. Oh. You had us worried half to death, and you must never do that again. I'm sorry. And you raced your little tail off and kicked so much human butt. And I'm so proud of you. And I am so mad at you. <laughs> I love you, I've experienced that exact emotion as a parent. That exact same thing. Yep. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so mad at you. And kicking human butt. Of this year's Porto Rosso Cup. <laughs> the underdogs. As a parent of weird alien monsters, I'm always proud of my kids for kicking human butt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> always been there. Inspired by the boys to come out. Show who they are. <laughs> I want to talk about what's going on with you. Actually, I'll I'll say my thing later. Oh, it's, I'm watching a Pixar movie, so I'm tearing up. That's all. <laughs> okay. There's nothing special. It's just <laughs> damn you, Pixar. That's all. 
something that's been on my mind a lot lately is the realization that if we share who we are just to share who we are, not with an agenda to convert anyone to our way of thinking, not with an agenda to to change anybody else, but just to share who we are. And if we view our differences as an opportunity to learn and to appreciate one another, we're all more real and we're all healthier for it. And we're not living in fear. I mean, so much of the, the violence in the world, so much of the rejection in the world comes from a place of fear. And to me, that's the greatest story of Luca. I love when the, when the two fish face women kind of <laughs> reveal themselves at the end, inspired by the boys. I love when Massimo stands behind the boys and he's like, they're my friends. You got a problem with that? Yeah. And it's like, no, we're, we're good. We're good. I've talked about it today. I'm a straight white Christian guy, right? Uh, and my, some of my greatest friendships and associations and experiences have been... Outside is, of those Yeah, groups, I've been to Islamic right? mosques. I've been to Hindu temples and Buddhist temples. I've been in, you know, you invite me to your church, I'll go. You don't go to church, okay, let's go to wherever you hang out. Making friends with people whose skin is different than mine, whose sexuality is different than mine, has been the most enriching, rewarding experience of my life, and I consider myself a much better person for it. Right. And there are people who try to reverse gatekeep me and say, well, you can't be one of us. By reverse gatekeeping me, you're just walling yourself off. Oh, damn, son. Get this man a mic so he can drop it. There's a mic on his phone. It, it counts. <laughs> so as I said, I think we do a great disservice when we hide parts of who we are to fit in. So what we want to know in the comments is who are you? Where are you from? What do you believe? What makes you unique? Share it down below. So until next time, Silencio Bruno. No, no, no. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. And watch movies. Bruno. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Ugo. <laughs> You get to hear me talk. I can talk without stopping sometimes for maybe 12 hours. And you get to listen, so you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs>